Chapter 3 The Harmattan Goddess The night had now turned to dawn as one half of the city rose, the other half prepared to go back to sleep. Night Eagle was supposed to be part of the latter half, but not tonight. She followed Tohazi as he following the dark energy that still lingered after Obimpa's possession of Layla. They had reached the bustling open air AMC mall at East Legon, tensed, ready for confrontation as they rolled between crowded party people, either ending the night or just getting started. Those who saw them were either very surprised or too drunk to make sense of it. There, Tohazi pointed at one of the restaurants that had been open all night. Night Eagle pulled Tohazi aside and said, Remember, our goal is to save Layla while stopping Obimpe. We need to draw out the goddess without harming the girl. Tohazi nodded in agreement. Up ahead loomed an expansive restaurant, and as they drew closer, Night Eagle noticed the diner's sluggish movements. Obimpe! Tohazi growled, pulling back a mystical arrow from his bow. At the center table, the possessed body of Layla sat smiling cold, one hand outstretched and pulsating with unnatural energy. The last patrons slumped over husks of themselves. Layla's head turned, crimson eyes fixing on the newcomers. Come, sit. I just finished with these ones. Obimpa spoke through Layla's lips. Night Eagle barked. This ends now, Obimpe. Release the girl! Obimpe flung out Layla's arms. A roaring blast of Hamatan winds launching towards them. They dove apart, the dry winds scarring skin and scattering debris. So as he leapt up onto a table, losing an arrow, crackling with blue energy. Obimpe dodged it easily. Night Eagle exclaimed, I said we need to free the girl. I know. Tohazi replied, I'm only using not deadly arrows. Night Eagle rolled behind the bar, grabbing a discarded beer bottle from the neck. Abimpe threw back her head and cackled, I am a goddess. I will feast on your soul. The disembodied voice seemed to come from everywhere. You cannot stop me. Abimpe's taunt was cut short as she received the bottle that Night Eagle held at her head. She crashed backwards through chairs and tables. Did you know what to free the girl on hop? Tohazi asked in surprise. That was a distraction, that ego replied. She wasn't fast enough. You dare challenge me, fools? Obimpe hissed, hands already gathering tongues of winds and sand that howled dangerously. With blinding speed, Obimpe hurled Two roaring funnels of Hamatan went straight at her opening. Night Eagle dove and rolled, narrowly avoiding the focus game. It exploded the table behind her into splinters. So as he shoots an ethereal arrow at Obimpe, which deflects the assault. He then counters with three more arrows in rapid succession. Obimpe easily battled the projectiles aside and thrust both palms forward. The shockwaves rippled out, hurling Night Eagle into Hazi backwards. They slammed hard into the restaurant's brick walls. The wind knocked out to them. She lazily flicked the wrist, swirling Hamatan coalesced into a spear of hardened wind and sand. With terrifying speed, it pierced through Tohazi's shoulder in a spray of blood. He cried out and dropped to one knee. Night Eagle fired her grappling hook to yank Tohazi out of the line. More wind spears followed. She helped him take cover behind a demolished bar. This isn't looking good. Night Eagle said grimly, we need to try something different before she kills us both. So has a grimace thing joke. Do you still have that trick up your sleeve? I do actually. I just don't like to use it often. Night Eagle replies as she taps on her headgear. Bring the light. Night Eagle says to the AI in her mask. At once, the AI assistant replies. Skidding across a ruined floor. Night Eagle spotted a streak approaching, coalescing into the form of light speed. 
I need a hand? Nightspeed quipped to her, not waiting for a response she shot to towards in a blur. Nightspeed, at your service. I see you started a party without me, she said, giving a mocking salute to Tohazi's direction. Lightspeed, lead to Hazi, Night Eagle said. Wait, the same Tohazi you spoke about? The Red Hunter Tohazi? It's an honor to meet someone as ancient, uh, I, mean, I mean, as mature, I mean, as historical as yourself. Before he would reply, she eyes his mystical bow and says, Is that a legendary question? I've heard every pull of the bow ages the archer by one year. Is that true? Bimpa shoots a blast at light speed, which she easily dodged before zipping to stand in front of Layla. I thought it would be bigger, but it kind of looked like that social media influence on Layla. And Bimpa shot another blast on light speed. Light speed ran back to her allies and asked, Is that why you're the only one who can use this bow? Because you can't age? I think that's so cool. You're so cool. It's nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you, Lightspeed, to Hazzy said. We need to distract her and get those civilians safe, pointing to a small group of staff members still huddled under the tables. Can you handle crowd control? Lightspeed grinned. Please, I can evacuate this whole block in 10 seconds flat. Stand counting. 10, 9. In the blink, she was zooming from table to table, gently helping people to their feet and rushing them outside at impossible speed. In seconds, the restaurant was empty but for the three heroes in Olympia. Lightspeed runs to face Layla again. Let's see how well you can dance, Lightspeed taunted playfully. She began running circles around Olympia once again, kicking up a tornado of plates and cutlery that obscured the deity's vision. Moving almost too fast to see, Lightspeed created a whirlwind around Olympia, trying to confuse her. But with another blast, Olympia dissolved the winds. But Lightspeed was too quick, landing hundreds of rapid fire snaps as she encircled the beeper. Let the girl go! The impact forced the goddess back step by step till she stumbled and fell back. Furiously shooting her blast around randomly, Obimpe gets a lucky shot with her hammer time blast that hits oh. Lightspeed. Lightspeed immediately starts to shiver, turning ashy pale, stumbles. Falling over a table, Night Eagle tries to go to Lightspeed's aid, but Obimpe shoots another blast at her, which forces her to hide again. We've got to end this quickly, Night Eagle yelled to Tohazi as she ducked for cover again. Working on it, Tohazi replied as he etched glowing mystical symbols into the ground. Obimpe pounced, grabbing Lightspeed by the neck. Fools! Obimpe snarled through Layla's mouth. I am beyond you all! Night Eagle dove in desperately once again, but Obimpa swat her hair aside like an insect. Lightspeed's legs kick it uselessly as she turned purple. Now you shall bleed your last! Obimpa shall. Oh, come on, the dialogue is so generic. Now you shall bleed your last! Obimpa said. At that same moment, Tohazi came out of hiding, stamped his foot activating the glowing mystical symbols he had drawn on the restaurant floor. The goddess recoiled as if she recognized the seals. Tohazi's voice rang out in an ancient talk. Obimpe, we don't lead you. He slammed both palms down on the glowing ritual circle. Blinding light erupted outward. Obimpe screamed and dropped light speed. We don't lead you. Tohazi repeated in the ancient tongue. With a blood curdling shriek, the glowing spirit of a beeper was wrenched free from Layla's body through her mouth. The girl collapsed limply. Light speed dove to catch her before she hit the floor. Beeper's spirit thrashed against the magical chains. Tohazi held open a carved gourd in one hand, continuing the incantation. Weakened, the goddess with white hair shrank smaller and smaller as she was drawn irresistibly towards Tohazi's waiting gore. No! I will not be caged again! Let me go! Obimpe shrieked. Yempo, help! With a rush of darkness, the towering masculine spirit of Yempel appeared. His hand settled intimately on his sister's shoulder as he murmured ancient words. I need you, Obimpe. I need you, my sister. Brother and sister clasped hands triumphantly before fading.
The ritual had failed. The demigods remained free. Night Eagle stared after the fading spirit, heart pounding. Was that? Was that her brother that interrupted the ritual? To has a reply, yes. I suppose you know about Yempel, Obimpe's twin brother. It seems they still have the power to call upon each other when needed. Just then, light speed zoomed back into view. Layla's at the hospital now, and there's two of the spirits now? Lightspeed asked, what exactly do those Hamatan gods want? Tohazi told the tale. I witnessed the twilight of these demigods firsthand, just about 400 years ago. Back then, the Akran clans worshipped the children of the spider god Yankopon. They were six pairs of twins. Ajanim and Kumi, the storm god, stood for leadership and power. Yempel and Obimpe, the Harmatan gods, represented orphans and vagabonds. Bekwe and Bedeakum, the warrior gods, stood for war and vengeance. And there were three other twins. Altogether, these gods ruled the various clans and in their own time, and were each worshipped, all except Yempel and Obimpe, who were loathed. You see, no one liked the Harmatan seasons, and orphans are not known for singing praises. Even their fellow gods did not like them much. They only called on them when they had had their good times with humans. Soon, envy and hubris festered in lonely Obimpe's heart. With her brother Yempel's cunning, she sowed discord between hot-headed Kumi and his twin, the proud Ajanin. This soon turned into a civil war among the demigods. The war soon spread to even the clans that worshipped these demigods. Brother was fighting brother, father fighting son, over a squabble engineered by Obimpe and her twin. They... We lost so much. Through some human intervention, the demigods came to learn they had been tricked and Obimpe was now in possession of Ajanin's god-killing weapon. It was a season of large storms in Harmatan as the demigods fell one by one to Obimpe and Yempel. It took a daring stand and some luck to finally get the weapon away from Obimpe. They banished Obimpe into a baobab tree and imprisoned Yempel inside a rock near the sea. And as for themselves, they retreated to their fortress in the spirit dimension beyond a Fajato. Tohazi shook his head wordy. If they've returned, we can only assume the ambition remains unchanged. We need 